In this video, I'm going to talk through objective three and objective four of the last topic, three in module one. Objective three is just an introduction to what's called summation notation. And then objective four is actually putting this into practice. We're going to evaluate a series using summation notation. So what is summation notation? It is just another way to write add it all up. Summation notation uses something called sigma. This E looking thing right here is called sigma. Whenever you see the E looking thing, all it means is I want to add everything up within the bounds that it's given. All right, so let me go down here and explain that a little bit more. The bounds that it's giving, so it's just another way to rewrite. Let me give you a series. 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 plus 10 plus 12 plus 14. Dot, 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 goes on. That is a series, right? You're familiar with that from a previous video. What this sigma notation, this E looking thing is doing is saying, I want to find the sum of the bounds 3 to 7. So from the third term to the seventh term, I want to find the sum of all of those terms. That's how this is writing that. All right, so the third term in this case is 6 to the seventh term is 14. So what this does for us is it can kind of section off a series and say, I only want to find the sum of this given interval, 6 to 14. So what, what 7 is and what 3 is are just boundaries, the lower boundary and the upper boundary. All right? I'm going to write then, 7 is the upper limit. Or upper boundary. More specifically, I, it's just the last term I care about. And then the lower boundary is technically called the index, but I'll label it a couple different ways. Index, lower boundary, Or the beginning term that I care about. Those two names are good for it. And then finally, the other piece of information you need to know is they're always going to give you the explicit formula. So you won't have to come up with that yourself. So please, this does look a little confusing. Please don't be confused between finding the sum if given a series like we've already done versus finding the sum if given summation notation. It's just another way to look at it. It's just another way mathematicians have come up with to manipulate a series. So they're going to always give you a lower boundary. They're going to always give you a, an upper boundary, or upper limit. They're always going to give you the explicit formula. You still have to use the series formulas that we've talked about, and I'll go over those in just a second. And then you still have to identify the unknowns, and then you still have to calculate the formula with those new pieces of information in. All right. So it's still the same process, just beginning part looks a little bit different. So let's put this into play a little bit more. First things first, I want to remember what the series formulas were. So arithmetic is s of n equals n times a sub 1 plus a sub n all over 2. Geometric This is series, so series and series. Geometric series is S sub n equals a sub 1 times r my 1 minus r raised to the n all over parentheses 1 minus r. So we're still going to reference those formulas. We're just going to get the unknowns a little bit different. So I wrote the steps out of how I would take to solve something like this in red, and it's still a similar process. The first process is to identify, is it arithmetic or geometric? But again, because it's in a different format, it's in sigma notation, this process is going to look a little bit different. Let me back up, though. If I'm doing number one, the biggest thing that jumps out at me is I see this funny-looking E thing. If you remember, that E thing just means add up all the terms from my lower boundary to my upper boundary. So I want to add up the first term all the way to the fifth term. 
I don't necessarily know what those terms are, and I honestly, I don't really care either. All I care about is the first and the nth term, whatever that is. But that's what it means. And so if I see that E thing, it just means I'm going to add up all the terms within my lower boundary to my upper boundary. In this case, it's 1 to 5. Over here, it's 1 to 6. Down here, if you notice, it's the 7th term to the 10th term. So those numbers will change. So I need, again, back to step 1, arithmetic versus geometric. I need to look at the explicit formula for step 1, which is right here. And I said this way back when. An arithmetic explicit formula has the variable in the basement, or in the lower part of the of the formula. In this case, k is in the basement. It has an exponent, but it is not the exponent. It's the lower part. So I know that this is arithmetic because of the location of the variable in my explicit formula. Now, over here, if you look at the explicit formula, 5 is the base. A number is the base raised to a variable m. Whenever the variable is in the powers, as 5 to the m is, whenever it's in the powers, it is going to be geometric. So I gave you an answer for your problem. All right, but I just want to make that known. Whenever the variable is in the powers, it's going to be geometric. So I've done step one. I've identified, is it arithmetic or geometric? Now, step two is going to look a little bit different, so please follow along and take notes as I do this. I have to find the unknown values. The unknown values are still in reference to my formulas. In this case, I need to determine it was arithmetic because now that tells me to use this formula on the left. So this formula has an unknown of n, of a sub 1, and a sub n. We've already familiarized ourselves with that, but I need to find n a sub 1 and a sub n. But this is where this process looks a little bit different, all right? Because in order to find all three of these variables, the unknown variables, I have to do a little bit different than what I had to do in previous objectives. So I'm going to write n here. And I need you to write this down as well. n equals the upper limit minus the lower limit and then you add 1 to whatever that is. So write that down. You need to know that. So in this case, n equals my upper limit, which is 5, minus my lower limit, which is 1, plus 1. Easy math. 5 minus 1 is 4, plus 1 is 5. So n, in this sigma notation, is 5. All right, good so far with n. Now, let's talk about a sub 1. a sub 1, I actually need to reference my explicit formula. I'm going to evaluate 1 into my explicit formula. I'm going to input, because I want to find out what the first term is, and this calls upon previous knowledge as well. So I'm going to input 1 into my formula in order to find what the first term is of this series. So in this case, it's going to be, instead of k, I'm going to write 1 squared plus 4 equals. Now, 1 squared is 1 plus 4 is 5. So my a sub 1 term is 5. These two won't always be the same. It just happened to be in this case. And then finally, I'm going to see blue, a sub n. Similar process as before. I have the explicit formula. If you remember, we used to have to find the explicit formula. Now it's given to me. A sub n, let me move this over actually. A sub n, in this case, we already found n up here. n is 5. So instead of a sub n, technically what I'm finding is a sub 5. I switched my n with 5 because I found that here. I found out what my n is. So I need to evaluate a sub 5. So in the same process of evaluating a sub 1, I put 1 in for my k. Now I'm going to put 5 in for my k. So now I have parentheses 5 squared plus 4. And 
And that equals 5 squared is 25 plus 4 is 29. So I have all three, a sub n, in this case a sub 5, is 29. Now, please make note too, a sub n won't always be a sub 5. It will always be a sub whatever your n is. In this case, n is 5. That's why I said a sub 5. My a sub n variable is 29. I'm done with step 2. I found all the unknown values of the formula. Now, step three, you've already had experience with. We just input the unknowns into my formula. So I'm going to write S of N equals N, but in this case N is 5, times A sub 1, which is 5, plus A sub N, which is 29, all over. S of n equals, and if I put that into my calculator, 5, parenthesis, 5 plus 29, divided by 2, S of n equals 85. Make sure you get 85 in your calculator as well. Now I understand this is a, it's another extensive process, but you're more than capable of doing this if you follow it step by step. What this really means, in this series given to me, with the explicit formula k squared plus 4, the sum of the first term all the way to the fifth term is 85, and I am done. Number 2 is going to look a little bit different than number 1 because it's geometric, but number 3 will look very similar to number 1. Now, before you actually pause the video, I need to make one more mention. I mentioned that this is geometric because variable exists in the powers of that explicit formula. Now, if you notice, you also have to identify the R for a geometric series. That R comes from way back when, let me see if I can find it here. Uh, right here. It comes from this parent formula for the explicit formula. Remember, R is always the number that is being raised to the power. All right, so in this case then, my R is going to be the number that is raised to the power, or raised to the variable. So in this case, the only number that is being raised to a variable is 5. Sometimes you'll see something like 2 times 3 raised to the X or something. The number raised to the variable is 3, not 2. All right, 3 is paired with the variable, so in that case, r would be 3. But for the example you're about to do, r is 5. So please, at this point in the video, try number 2 and number 3 on your own. At this point, you should pause the video and try number 2 and number 3 on your own. Here's my work for number 2, written in purple. I determined it was geometric. I found r because of the number paired with the variable. In this case, the only number there was 5. So 5 raised to the m, r is 5 because it's paired with that power. And then I identified n, upper limit minus lower limit. So 6 minus 1 plus 1, that's the formula from over here, equals 6. a sub 1, I input 1 into my variable for m. 5 raised to the 1 is 5, so it's just 5 for a sub 1. And that's all I had to come up with for that, because it's geometric. If you notice, the only unknowns for geometric are a sub 1, r, and n. So at that point, I'm ready to input it into my formula. So that's what I did here. So please make note that your work looks like mine there, because that's the most important piece of this, is inputted in incorrectly. And then finally, that is my final answer down here. Same thing for number 3. There is my work. And my answer down there is S of n equals 2. My answer for number 1 is S of n equals 19,530. If you didn't get any, or if, if your work doesn't look like mine for these two problems, you didn't please check with your neighbor. If they can't identify where you went wrong, then please raise your hand so that I can come over and look at it.